What's going on, everybody? All right, so uh, if you watch the other video, which should be uploaded by the time you see this one, um, I went and got the EG4 uh, 6000 XP, which is like a really, really nice all-in-one solar charge controller inverter. And um, it's 48 volts, so it's a big change for me. Actually, 48 volts would be like a nominal 51 point something, like 51.2. Um, basically, 12.8 uh, times 4 or something like that, whatever that is. Anyway, um, so this has been unavailable for quite a while. It really sells out fast. And if you looked at, like, last month, you couldn't find it anywhere, not online, nowhere. So what's nice about getting stuff from Santan Solar is that they don't, you don't pay the tax. So it's a solar product, it's a tax write-off. So somehow they're able to, to leverage that. And if you pick it up, if you pick it up from the store, you don't have to pay tax. Now if you order it, I think, I think if you order it and have it shipped, I believe you do. Because it's uh, something different about how that works. So uh, this thing's about 53 pounds from the website. Uh, uh, 15 by 28 by some like five and a half. So it's not gonna be particularly small. I'm kind of trying to figure out where to put it. Um, I have my other stuff right over here, and it just sits on a metal rack. It's just, you know, fireproof, basically. So they always say, don't mount these on a uh, wooden wall or anything like that. Anyway, I'm going to try and figure out which way I should open this. Uh, I don't know if it has a thing that says where it should be opened, but I'm going to guess the black line means that that's probably... Where did you go? Set this down. Let's see where my camera is at. Let's see if you guys can see. Okay. So, we don't have a lot of room in here. I gotta clean my shop. Uh, but this is where it's gonna reside for now. My order on there. You see it was on a pallet, strapped down. Please. Squished it. Take the living hell out of it. Really taped. just going to be an unboxing video for those of you who watch this video going, oh great, another unboxing video. Now I'm going to pull it out of here and we're going to put it on the table and we're going to set it up. Now honestly, I don't know how to use this yet because I've never used one. Okay. Nice packing foam. See right here there's something uh, please require your local supplier for customer code during registration I'm gonna guess this is the uh, USB uh, dongle cool so that's something that looks like an HDMI connector on it anyway this is Bluetooth or Wi-Fi something like that so that's cool um, I don't know if that's something that you normally get with it from all sellers, but you need that if you want to uh, connect it online. So, wow, that's huge. This is freaking cool. Uh, man. Wow. Oh, geez. Let me bring it in here. That thing's huge. Awesome. So this is going to have all of our breakers for everything in here. Um, battery, rapid shutdown. Uh, it's made by Lux Power, which if you go on Lux Power's website, you'll see there are no prices for any of the things they sell. Lux Power has a version of this, but this is basically one. It's been rebadged for EG4. 
Now, I've watched a lot of Will Proza's videos on EG4 stuff, and he seemed to, to like most of their stuff. And it seemed like the company made a lot of quality stuff. The problem with YouTube and a lot of other stuff and a lot of other people is that they church it up and they make it look like you're getting really good products. Like, I paid cash for this out of my pocket. This was uh, uh, $1,400, okay, $1,449 or something like that. So, I didn't get this for free. I didn't get a discount. Uh, Santan Solar, I've approached them uh, several times about trying to get deals so that I could support my YouTube channel. And they definitely do not uh, do not want to accommodate that. So even though you will see Santan Solar has some YouTube channels that they support, they're not willing to support this channel at all. Um, and I've bought a lot of stuff from them. They still don't care. And actually, they've kind of gave me a little bit of grief in the past. Um, like, basically, I bought a couple of EP Ever charge controllers, the 40 amp ones. Um, lots of solar panels, used ones, and um, a reliable 3,000 watt inverter, a reliable 2,500 inverter, and basically what they told me in the beginning was like, okay, uh, you need this and this and this to do this, we think, maybe. So they have salesmen, and the salesmen don't really always know. You know, they don't have their own solar at home, so they, they have no idea. They're just basically going off of what, like, they think. And they look it up on the internet and, you know, all that. But they told me, if you have any problems with it, just return it and you can always upgrade. So that's exactly what I did. I bought a reliable 2500 inverter. I bought some solar panels. I bought some charge controllers. And, you know, I called them on the phone after I had uh, I exchanged, like, one of them and upgraded to the other one. And then had it for a while and it wasn't really working the way I wanted it to and I called them on the phone and said look I want to bring back the reliable inverter it's like a week old I don't like it I want to bring back these four 40 amp charge controllers they're all less than a month old and I want to return them and I'm going to go ahead and buy the LV48 or the LV6548 and he said, yeah, no problem. Come on down and bring it down, and, and we'll get you set up. So I brought all that stuff down there, you know, and got everything set up. And the guys there that work there, I think they all smoke a lot of pot. Their eyes are always kind of glassy looking. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm not really a drug addict, but, but I've been around a lot of stuff, you know, and... Um, I, I know what it looks like when somebody's high. But anyway, so they, the guy made a mistake. And he took too much of my money and did something. And he went to the back and he got out the inverter. And he set it down on the cart. And he said, okay, here's the deal. If you open this up, it's yours. You can't return it. We cannot take any more returns of any kind whatsoever. So, unless it's absolutely broken, you can't bring it back. And I said, well, wait a minute. Your policy says this, and you have said this. Yeah, well, but you're, you know, when every time you return something, it cuts into somebody's commission. Oh, okay. Well, so basically what you're telling me is that if I don't like it, I'm stuck with it, even though your policy says satisfaction, 100% satisfaction. So they basically said yes, and they brought the manager out there when they did all this too. So I, I said, you know what? I said, I don't want it. I don't like how you're treating me. I don't want it. So uh, go ahead and uh, do this and whatever. So at this point, they'd already, uh, I think they'd already charged my card or something, you know, anyway. It, it, yeah, they did. So it ended up being really complicated. In the process, um, I had paid cash for the other things. And they didn't have enough cash to give me my money back. But what happened was, they actually screwed me by a couple hundred dollars when I made the purchase. But somehow, when the return happened, it all got fixed. And this is why it's really a bad idea to deal with 
multiple things, cash and credit or debit at the same time. But so at that point, I basically had to say, okay, uh, give me back two of the EP overs and the reliable inverter and put the rest back on my card. And so that's what ended up happening. And it took a while for it to get back on my card. And it was a real pain in the ass. And so I didn't want to deal with them anymore. Um, and that was the time when I returned the HVLV2424. Uh, which is another thing I had. So um, so long story short, yeah, those guys, they could be a pain in the ass. And everybody that I've ever dealt with there looks like they're high. And not like high on drug drugs, but like high on weed and eyes glassed over. And when people smoke pot, they make mistakes, man. They're slow. You know, I've been quoted prices over the phone. And and then I go down there and they say, oh, no, oh, oh I'm so sorry. Like, dude, you're like $400 off. You know, that's a big deal. So anyway, um, I'm not affiliated by anybody whatsoever. So whatever I do with this... Is going to be an honest review. It's not going to be anything. I cannot even make a commission on here. I tried to set up a uh, an account with Santan Solar, you know, to sell stuff, but like, it's just a pain. It's not worth it. I tried to set up a, an account with Watch Twenty Four Solar to set up an account, but the problem is these companies don't want to stay. They don't want to stay consistent with what they're selling. So Watch 24-7 still has some of the MPP stuff. That's what I had at the time, and that's what I was trying to promote. And then I started to find out that they actually have problems. So anyways, so we won't get into all that. So um, this will just be a video for the actual unboxing. And um, I'm going to go take it over there. But I think I might split the video up just because I rambled on for way too long. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm very impressed by what I see in the box here. It's quite a bit larger than I thought it would be, so that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, so I, I guess I need to figure out what else is in the box here and get it out of the box. So we have a lot of that out of here. Okay, so we got some a BMS cable, maybe battery com cable. Yeah, uh, parallel communication cable so nice that they use an ethernet cable I, I don't think there's anything special to it so you can parallel up to 16 of these for 96 kilowatts so if you live in a third world country you're an American in South America or something I mean but who can afford 16 of these I mean that's going to be like $20,000 or something and I don't know where you even find that many. Wow. So they give you these wall anchors. Looks, they look like stainless steel. If you drill a hole in the wall, these are expandable. Um, thick manual. That's pretty cool. Okay, we're going to set that over here. Uh, so I don't see anything else in the box. Big thing sticking on the side over there. So I'm trying to think. I'm gonna have to pull this out of here, and it's 53 pounds, so I got to figure out the camera's right in the way of where I need to go. Um, so I don't know that I need to film myself pulling it out of the box, but you might want two people to do this. Is what I'm thinking. So, I'm not sure how easy this is going to be. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. So, you get that right there. Okay, that wasn't terribly
terribly bad. Let's see if there's anything else in the box. I don't see anything else in here. I don't even want to know how heavy a low frequency inverter would be. So. I always try and undo this carefully because if you really had a problem with something, you could probably take it apart and put it back and say, nope, never even took it out of the package. Hi, hi. Um, What I'm going to do is I'm just peeling the tape off of this thing completely, removing all of their tape. So I don't have to deal with it. Now if I wanted to repack this, I'd use my own tape. Silica packet. Do we see? I think this is weatherproof, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm wondering why it's so heavy. I mean, it's really only double the power of uh, most things. Um, so, like, for example, that's 3,000 watts at 24 volts. And also, once you get up to... 48 volts, everything kind of can get smaller because you get higher voltage and lower um, current. Uh, so, this part here has to come off, but as you can see, this is who it's made by. Uh, we have some knockouts down in the bottom. Apparently, these are knockouts. Yep. That's crazy. I don't actually like that idea of the knockouts because once you knock them out, you can't put them back. It'd be pretty obvious if you got a used one because somebody's going to have to knock these out or leave this cover off. Um, so. It'd be nice if they had to put handles on the damn thing. I mean, it is really... It feels super heavy. I don't know. Like there's a transformer in it, you know, but they say it, there's not. So, I'm not sure where the bulk of the weight comes from. I mean, yeah, it's pretty big, but the sheet metal here doesn't look real thick to me. So, it's not going to be weatherproof. I don't know about these breakers as far as the quality of them. So, what's really nice is, okay, I had everything hanging off of everything. You see, I got a breaker there, a breaker there, and then I had a battery breaker. But it kept tripping. And it wouldn't pop all the way. It wouldn't pop out like that. So it would it would trip, but it would sit there like this, and I had no idea what was going on. And I had multiple batteries hooked up, and this battery would get kicked out, and then it'd be running off of these ones only. So it's gonna be nice to have all that built in and just put the wires to this. So literally, well there are handles. There's handles on the side here, guys but not necessarily the best place for them. So, this is really nice. You have an on and off switch, and you have this uh, rapid. So if you put this here, I guess nobody can turn it. It feels really cheap, though. <laughs> it 
Feels really cheap. I, I definitely don't like this switch. Ugh. It feels like it's gonna break. So. I don't know if I'm missing something here, but I don't like how that feels. Oh boy. So that locks it out, but boy, this thing is cheap as hell. Not liking it. So, we're going to need to get into the manual. Um, so I'll be right back. So I'm going to just go over the, the manual with you guys really quick. It's really just not, it's not meant to be like a how-to. I'm just going to show you what I see so far. Okay, so technical specifications is kind of what I'm looking at. Um... So this does 120 and 240 volts, which is a pretty big deal. 37.5 amps at 240. Um, AC bypass grid, 50 amp. So max continuous current at 240 volts, 25 amps. So it's not 37.5. Okay. Um, This thing is so brand new, it doesn't want to stay. So what I'm looking at, because I'm probably going to probably gonna have to reconfigure my array. Nominal power output, 6,000 watts. Max continuous line wattage, 3,000. Surge capacity, double. 12,000 watts for 3.5 seconds. 11,000 for 5 seconds. So that'd be great for like central air maybe. THD less than 3%. Switch time less than 15 milliseconds 30th parallel. Number of MPPTs 2. Inputs per MPT 1. Uh, max usable input current 17 amps and 17 amps. Max usable input current, 25 amps. Max short circuit input current, uh, 17. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Max usable input current is 17. Short circuit is 25. DC input voltage range, 100 to uh, 48, 480. So I will have to reconfigure because I'm using two panels in series. They're 37 volts each. So let me go, go over here and bookmark this. Um, and I'm going to just take a look at this really fast, assuming that this cord will reach. Um, so you'll see like right now. I'm at 53 volts. Man, the output is doing great. You know, 1.35 kilowatt out of that. So these ones are good. So see, I've got only 0.3 amps out of here because I'm not fully loaded. And then the 2.7 amps out of that with 1.35 kilowatt out of that is quite a bit. Let's see what we got for the day. It's uh, 3 o'clock. No, I forgot. Up goes down. Okay. Our load is 1.3. Output 1.3. Yeah, we've done 5.49 kilowatts for the day. That's higher than normal. Interesting. So, this battery should be pretty charged. Anyway, um, what I'm hoping to do is get this thing online before it's dark. But it means I've got to go outside and I've got to change a bunch of stuff. I need to figure out about this switch. 
I feel like if I turn it, it's gonna break. It's spring loaded, so maybe that's why it feels like that. But I'm like, okay, I'm gonna read the instructions before I do something that I feel like is stupid. I know that's like very counterintuitive. But the switch doesn't feel right to me, so I don't wanna touch it. It's not feeling nice. Okay, so we're gonna go back over here. Um, so basically we need 100 volts or more, so I gotta go three, three panels, but apparently I have to go four. So um, I've got groups of four in a couple of spots, so maybe I'll hook up eight panels to this thing at first. Um, I can probably just string them all together because if we take 37 volts times 8, uh, let me find my calculator. Well, it'd be like 300 something volts, I think. Let me see. I have this super old calculator. Might not even work over here. 37 times 8. 296 volts. So we could definitely put more than 8 panels in series. The thing with series though is if one of those panels gets shaded the whole thing goes down. So um, now let's clear this. Clear. So 10 panels would be 370, 12 would be uh, right at the limit, 444. You wouldn't want to um, be higher than 12 panels, I don't think, because this thing has a limit of 480. And that gives you a 40 volt cushion, but the thing is, with cold weather, all of a sudden the panels can start putting out a ton of voltage. And then, boom, you smoke the thing. So, I'm not even comfortable with the 40 volt. Um, I actually don't like real high DC voltage uh, because it does some really gnarly stuff. So, I would probably just go 10 panels, maybe even 8 in series. It depends on what's going to be easy for me to do. Uh, I could also probably uh, start with, you know, 37 times 4. I could probably start with 148 volts and do that. Um, the, uh, so 148 divided by, let's uh, say, 51. 2.9. I don't know if that's right. 48 divided by 148. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure offhand what the current would be, but I've got 10 gauge PV wire, so I should be pretty good. Okay. Efficiency says it's a uh, 99% for the charge controller, 93% for the battery, idle consumption is standby mode with PV is less than 30 watts, with battery is equal to 50 watts, with AC is less than 50 watts. So really low idle consumption. Uh, battery type, lead acid, lithium, max discharge current 140 amps. Um, so I guess that means that basically I have enough batteries, so you just want to be, um, well actually maybe I don't, you want like 100 amp hours, somewhere around that, at 48 volts. And so that puts you a little under, because It'd be about 51.2 volts for the thing fully charged at 100 amp hours would be like 5.2 kW. 
Um, so that's why they're saying 140. Because. Let's see if we can get this thing to turn back on. Well, 140 times 51 is over 6kW. So. Um, battery range is uh, 46 to 60 volts. Uh, high cutoff voltage. Uh, 59 battery uh, REC battery per inverter less than 200 amps okay. we have some more specifications on the next page I'm going to try and go through this kind of quickly um, high DC recovery voltage 57.4 volts uh, Load, low DC warning, um, low DC cutoff voltage, uh, 20% or something, I don't know. Um, general data, maximum units in parallel 16, integrated disconnect, yes, DC switch rated for each MPPT, weight. 52.9 pounds. Um, Transformerless. Um, relative humidity, altitude. Uh, operating temperature range 32 to 113 Fahrenheit. Storage temperature. To 140 degrees Fahrenheit, noise emissions less than 58 dB, uh, communication interface RS 485, Wi Fi, and CAN bus, standard five year warranty, PV reverse polarity protection, pole sensitivity liquid leaking current monitoring unit. Surge protection, device output over voltage protection, output over voltage protection, varistor, yes. Uh, certifications UL 1741 FCC part 15 class B so I'm hoping that guys will you know and most of the people subscribe to my channel know I'm a ham but somebody might be watching this video who just bought one of these and they're not into ham radio these other inverters wipe out my radio I can show you right here we we'll turn on this radio and we will see Now, right now, we don't see anything because the antenna is not hooked to the radio, so it's actually only picking it up from outside. But what happens is the inverters radiate through your solar array, which in my case is in my backyard underneath my antenna. So when I go outside and I hook up this antenna really quick, you will suddenly see the noise. So give me one second. might have actually disconnected the antenna inside too. Nope. That is very strange. So what happened is I had my RF gain somehow turned down. You see the little thing right there. So this is normal. You go back to where it was. Each one of these is the solar. If I shut it down, it will all disappear. So we're hoping that all that will disappear once we get this thing set up. See? Evenly spaced. That's the MPPTs and the inverter doing their thing. Get the overload. So these are all from my solar. Now what happens with a lot of these is companies make fake FCC certifications.
So this is a brand new radio. I had to turn off the preamp, but they have set by default. That's the noise that it makes. Now you have separate noises from both the inverter and the charge controller. So anyway, we're, we're going to get back to what we were doing, but yeah, so I wanted to show you guys that. So for those that are ham operators and you realize that solar is definitely noisy, uh, you see how it is now. So we'll do another video later when we have this thing finally hooked up. Um, but back to the manual, let's see what we got here. Um, basically, uh, we've got a few more things to go over before we start really doing anything. Um, it gives you a list of abbreviations, that's really cool. So stuff that they might use in here that we don't understand. Um, safety instructions, um, which is seriously important because you're gonna be dealing with hundreds of volts DC, which is nasty. And it can kill you. Um, it shows what it looks like inside. The switch. Um, the dry contacts. The battery. All this other stuff. Uh, the fans. Wi-Fi GPRS module. Brief introduction. Inverter features. Applications for purely off-grid inverter backup power situation integrated with two MPPT charge controllers with a maximum PV input of 480 volts. Optimal range is 120 to 385. You really do want to be within that. Because if you put too much voltage in there, it's got to work too hard. So that's why I'm going to try and be real close to that. Um, I forget what we were saying. Um, four panels times 37. That 148, which is probably on a little bit on the low side. I'm gonna start low and see how it goes, um, because there's already panels four next to four next to four, so that just means I can just get underneath the panels and daisy chain them all, and that's gonna be a little bit easier for me. I can do that in you know 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or whatever, and be up and running. So, okay. Um, now where I'm sitting at. And without some PV extensions and stuff like that, I'm probably not going to be able to, to hook the um, the unit up where it's sitting. Um, it really needs to go where the green one is, but because it's so big, I, I can't put it over there. Um, so, um, it's got arc fault protection. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, additional safety features are PV arc fault protection, PV ground fault protection, rated 6KW, power form factor 1, able to run without battery in off-grid mode. That is so cool. So, like, let's just say I can't figure this stuff out and it doesn't want to balance with my batteries. I can leave my batteries and all my stuff hooked up exactly how I have it right now, and I can just run this with off-grid, no batteries, and let it run my air conditioner or whatever I want it to run I mean like that's amazing okay it shows the switch it shows where it goes in there I just don't like how it feels I'm like worried about turning it um, uh, packing list uh, carriage bolts uh, expansion bolts user manual cables and it says it comes with a mounting template, and I didn't see that, but... Um, storage, how to mount it. Um, the mounting wall should be strong enough to bear the weight of the inverter. Please maintain the minimal clearances presented uh, below for adequate heat dissipation. The inverter should be installed upright on a vertical surface. So, basically... They show it upside down. They don't show it flat. So apparently, how I have it, they, they don't want it to be run like that. So, um, and it's probably just for ventilation because it's got like a chimney effect. Um, which is funny because all my inverters have been run laying down. Um, let me read this really quick. 
upright on a vertical surface. Okay. Um, goes into some more stuff here. This is a very, very thorough uh, deal. Um, mounting template. PV connection. So they gave you the mounting steps. Uh, install a separate DC breaker isolator between the inverter and the PV modules. I thought it had a breaker, but it, I guess it doesn't. Okay. Um, I will not have to redo mine though. The recommended DC breaker is a four pole, 600 volt, 20 amp, which is the minimum size isolator switch to house. Uh, both positive and negatives if using two independent strings. Interesting. If using only one string, a two-pole 600 volt 20 amp uh, isolator breaker is recommended. Uh, the recommended cable size is 10 gauge, which is what we got. Uh, consult the installer to ensure the appropriate cable sizing is used. Okay. Uh, reminder Verify the lowest ambient temperature of the installed location, the rated VFC of the solar module. The nameplate is obtained by blah blah blah. Now, DC input voltage range 100 to 480. Uh, load output minimum voltage 140. MPP operating voltage range 120 to 385. Nominal MPPT voltage 320 volts. Nominal amperage 17. Maximum 25. Maximum utilized solar power, 8 kilowatts. Uh, stringing size. When solar modules are put in a string series, the voltage multiplies the times the number of modules and the amperage stays the same. Note each MPPT is rated 4 kW of solar input, which leads to 8 kW total. Um, using the solar modules that have 40 volts VOC, with a maximum amperage of 10 amps. 10 modules wired in a series string would have a VOC of 400 volts and a string amperage of 10. When the temperature is lower, the voltage can rise above the maximum allowed by the inverter and damage will result. So this is like serious stuff here, guys. So he goes on to say, to determine the maximum, uh, or determine how many modules per string, first verify the lowest possible ambient temperature of the installation. Next, find the VOC, uh, ISC, and IMP of the solar module at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and then calculate the highest possible VOC for the entire string when the ambient temperature falls to the lowest possible ambient temperature upon sunrise. If you make this calculation, use a string calculator or consult a solar designer or solar electrician. Um, Warning, damage will occur if the string voltage exceeds the inverter's maximum input voltage of 480. Now finally, calculate the maximum current as to not exceed the inverter's MPPT circuit rating of 25 amps. Um, so this is another thing where you kind of are stuck doing this a certain way because you can't put more than 25 amps into it. And like, basically, I'm somewhere near that right now on my strings, but I'm also at 24 volts. So if I went to 40 volts or 48 volts, all my stuff would be in half. But my voltage is too low. So bare minimum for me, I need to go at least three panels in series before I can do anything. And then paralleling three panels is a pain in the butt. So you have multiple six and 12 and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, but when I have eight panels and two of them are in series to parallel, those um, two series panels all are about five amps, and then you got eight all together. So basically, five times four, you've already got 20 amps right there on that whole thing. So probably what I'll do is I'll put eight panels on this thing and we'll see how it does um, everything's going to be different because I got to re-switch the wiring but we'll see what other warnings that we have um, 
For all modules, calculations need to be performed by verified by using a string calculator or consulting a professional. The inverter has two charge controllers, uh, one and two utilizing up to 17 amps. It means two strings can be paralleled for any module. What? Uh, utilizing up to 17 amps for the whole entire thing. Ugh. Okay. Which means two strings can be parallel for any modules having less than 8 amps rating. When sizing strings for each MPPT, they must be the same model, brand, and per string in series and parallel. All panels on series parallel string should face the same orientation and be exposed to roughly the same shading across the string. Consideration should be placed on the location and wiring order of the racking and minimize the shading effects. One shaded module will disproportionately reduce the output of the entire string. This can be mitigated by avoiding linear strings in favor of rectangular strings or by the use of stringing optimizers. Note, the array may have higher IMP than 17 amps specified, but the MPPs may not make full use of the extra current which could lead to component deterioration over time. PV wiring instructions. Please follow the steps listed below to ensure proper connection. Before installing the wiring, please ensure all breakers are disconnected. The PV strings are not energized by using a multimeter to ensure there is no DC voltage on the lines. Once that has been verified, proceed to step two. Strip off a quarter inch of wire to 15 sixteenths. Insulation from the string, negative conductors. Using fine stranded wire, using ferrules to secure the connection to the inverter. Uh, blah blah blah. Insert the conducted conduit fittings. Insert the conduit fittings into the openings of the PV connection and tighten the inside. I don't have conduit fittings. They didn't give me any. So apparently you're supposed to get those. Uh, route the PV connectors through the conduit and into the inverter. Step five: PV con uh, conductors in place of their respective terminals. Torque to 10 inch pounds. Uh, verify. Um, Cables are securely tightened by tugging on them. Ensure the conduit and connection fittings are fastened reliably. Blah blah blah. I'm trying to hurry up and get this done, guys. We're 47 minutes into this crap. So we go into the battery connections. Okay, so the battery connections. It says uh, you can use uh, lead acid or lithium batteries. There is a combination of settings that need to be configured depending on the battery type. Uh, lead acid uh, recommended charge current is 0.2 C. Uh, follow the steps below to connect the battery wires. Place all breakers in the off position before connecting and disconnecting the wires. Ensure there is no DC voltage present between the voltmeter. Assemble the ring terminal based on the recommended battery cable and terminal size. Connect all the batteries of the unit required. Blah blah blah. Um, so basically, they say maximum amperage 140 amps, battery capacity uh, less than or equal to 200 amps, battery wire size 1AW. Um, yeah, uh, let's see what they say. The recommended capacity for the inverter is 200 amp hours. We're going to be at half of that, I guess. Yeah. Because the 24 volt battery I have is 100 amp hour, and um, it's going to go in series with the 12 ones. Lithium battery communications, we don't have any of that. EG4 makes a really nice uh, battery rack. Uh, let's see. This is a lot of stuff, guys. A lot. We're not even. I probably shouldn't have even covered any of this. This is ridiculous. Okay, so we got wiring information for the ground of the neutral bond. Um, the bond is not dynamic. Um, I can see I'm not going to be able to get this hooked up today. It's just not going to happen. Because I'm going to have to run all sorts of stuff to it. It's already 339. We're at our peak hour for solar, but... It drops quite quickly around 5. Uh, AC wiring information. 
they want eight gauge wire um, for generator for grid for load okay uh, let's see uh, always be sure to connect the AC output ground wire to the ground terminal bus Uh, the information below describes the nature of the ground and the neutral in the inverter and the relationship to the system. The neutral line is a solid connection between the AC input and AC output known as common neutral architecture. The neutral line between the AC input and output is never disconnected. This architecture assumes there is a single neutral ground bond in the system. Typically the neutral ground bond for the system will be at the first means of disconnect from the grid so your panel however if there is no neutral ground bond in the system the inverter can be configured to create the bond internally okay always be sure to connect the AC output ground wire to the terminal bus please follow the steps below before installation of any wiring please ensure all breakers are off well, that's common sense Strip the insulation, fasten the AC input wires to their respective terminals using fine stranded wire. Um, I'm wondering what the uh, current is, the requirement. I've got, um, what do I have? I've got 20 amps, 240 out here. Uh, la 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 la. la. Let's see. Working with the generator. I'm going to skip over that. Integrated. Two wire stop start. The inverter has two wire stop start contact connections. Okay, that's for the generator. Okay, that's cool. Uh, generator AC connections. You must use a 240 volt generator with this. Um, Off grid, uh, an inverter can be fully off grid, can fully function in off grid mode. This does not need the utility of your generator to function. Purely off grid systems that do not have access to utility should strongly consider having a two wire start backup generator for extended cloudy periods. 8 to 12 kilowatt diesel recommended per each inverter. Wow. Off-grid systems should have robust battery banks size to ensure multiple days of power and to reduce generator runtime. Off-grid wiring. The XP can accept 50 amps, 12 kilowatts of generator power and will pass through all available power to the loads. Therefore, the loads subpanel can be sized up to the size of the backup generator with 50 amps minimum per inverter. Parallel wiring information, I'm not going to get into all that. Parallel configuration, um, user settings, um, let's see, AC charge current, generator charge current, discharge settings, installer settings, common settings, application settings, uh, AC charge, Generator charge, um, monitor setup, third party communication, online monitoring, um, dashboard data, dashboard configuration, dongles, dashboard overview, firmware, uh, firmware update. Smartphone app setup, Wi-Fi password, working modes, bypass mode, PB charge bypass mode, battery off grid, uh, PB plus battery off grid, PB charge, PB charge off grid, AC charge, PB AC charge, PB off grid. Uh, PV powers the load. Note the load depends on PV energy input and may be unstable. So PV off grid is no battery, nothing. No, that's what we'll probably try that one first. 
um, external RSD rapid shutdown wiring instructions LCD display settings this is very thorough guys um, yeah so um, wow I, I wish the video wasn't so long guys but boy we're gonna have to wrap that up 55 minutes so I will put another video out once I start getting this thing hooked up so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching um, as the boring people say if you like what I'm doing Feel free to subscribe and support my channel by doing so. We're close to 5,000 subscribers. I just need a few more to reach that goal. And then next goal will be 10. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.